All right, in this video, we're looking at example 5.14, which is an application of Hess's law, where we're asked to solve for the enthalpy for the reaction of two solid aluminums plus three gaseous chlorines going to form two aluminum trichloride solids, given four reactions to solve for this overall reaction. Okay. So the strategy that I recommend you take here is find one thing from your overall reaction that you're solving for that only appears once in the equations you're given. So at ALCL3, for example, is not something I would choose to start with because it appears in a couple different equations. But if I look at my solid aluminum, right, that only appears in my overall equation and in equation number four. Notice I've numbered them one through four from slide 91 by my count toward the end of the chapter five slide. So I'm gonna start just by rewriting equation four because it matches up that two aluminum solid right where I want it to be as a reactant. So I'm going to rewrite that as a thermochemical equation, making sure I include my physical states and my enthalpy values. This reaction was unchanged, so the enthalpy value stays the same, negative 1,049 kilojoules. So that took care of my aluminum. Yeah. Now, how about Cl2? Yeah. Cl2, which I want in my overall equation, only appears in equation two. But equation two only gives me a single chlorine as a reactant. I want three of them. So I'm going to triple reaction two when I write it down here. I'm going to, and one thing I recommend you do, always try and match up your arrows down the middle here. So I'm gonna write 3H2, because I have to triple the overall reaction. I can never just change one thing. I have to triple everything. Okay, so that gives me six HCl gas. And now my delta H value, which I'm gonna bring over here, is negative 185 times three, because if the reaction gets tripled, the enthalpy value gets tripled. So that's negative 555 kilojoules. All right, so now that gave me my chlorine, my aluminum where I wanted them. How about the aluminum chloride? Let's look at it now. It's the only thing we have left to do. Okay, and aluminum trichloride here, right? Where does it appear? Well, as a solid, it actually only appears in reaction three. It's aqueous in both reaction four and reaction three. So I'm gonna take reaction three and write it. Right? So it gives me that aluminum chloride as a product. But again, this is only one of them. I want two, so I'm gonna double that third reaction. Matching up my arrows again. Two AlCl3 aqueous, going to two AlCl3 solid. My delta H value gets doubled, so it was plus 323, now it's plus 646 kilojoules. So now I've gotten everything where I want it to be, but I also got a whole bunch of extra stuff in my reaction that I don't want. So let's pause and figure out what exactly we have to deal with here. Okay. Write up all my reactants and my products so far. Keeping in mind, just like a net ionic equation, if something appears as both a reactant and a product, you can get rid of it. So my three H2s, for example, I'm going to get rid of them. Three H2 gas, there and there, it's gone. Two AlCl3 aqueous, I had it there and there, and it's gone. But what I'm not going to do is cross out those HCLs. Because even though it's six and six, this is HCL aqueous. This is HCL gas from reaction two. So those don't cancel one another out. So if I pause and consider what I have so far, I've got two aluminum solids plus six HCL aqueous plus three Cl2 gas going to 6-HCl gas plus 2-AlCl3 
solid, excuse me. And that delta H value so far is the sum of these things before. So negative 1049 plus negative 555 plus positive 646 gives me negative 958 kilojoules. So I've gotten closer, but I'm not at my final equation that I was asked to do. I have to get rid of those HCLs. And this is where reaction one is gonna come into play. If I write reaction one down here, right? HCl gas going to HCl aqueous, it will cancel out the HCLs on the opposite sides. But I need six of each of them. So if I multiply that reaction by a factor of six, the negative 74.8 enthalpy value also gets multiplied by six to give me negative 448.8 kilojoules. So now 6 HCl gas on both sides, aqueous. Now I have my overall equation exactly as it was provided to me. And I have a final answer. Now again, I just add those enthalpy values, negative 958 plus that negative 448.8. And I get negative 1406.8 kilojoules. That's the final answer for the enthalpy change that we were asked to solve for, for this reaction. Okay. I recommend you cross things out, right? That's why I try and get you to stack your arrows on top of one another before you rewrite the equation down here, right, as that intermediate equation. But if you find it easier to regather all your reactants and products in one reaction and then cross them out later on, that's fine too, right? We could have done the HCL step up here, saved ourselves a step later on. Whatever you're most comfortable in doing, there's a couple of strategies to use Hess's law. You find the one that works for you. But at the end of the day, remember, any change you make to an equation, you make to the enthalpy value as well. And because enthalpy is a state function, the sum of the enthalpy values is equal to the enthalpy change for the overall reaction. You can always be confident that you've done this correctly when you get the equation down at the bottom that you were asked for after everything else is canceled out.